All right, welcome to concept C. We're gonna be working on how to convert between moles and mass using dimensional analysis. Um, so what? remember, just a quick review of dimensional analysis. We did this back in unit one. We did it for unit conversions. Um, so just remember a couple of the concepts that came in is this equality. Um, the value in the numerator is equal to what's in the denominator. One kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters. Um, this is why we can use it. Also, I can flip this around. I, depending on um, if I had started with kilometers, I could have had the one kilometer on the bottom, the 1,000 meters on the top. Um, we simply choose the 1,000 meters to be in the denominator so that I can cancel out my meters. Um, so remember, whatever unit we start with should be the unit that then diagonally is in the denominator. Um, we also just did this in our last unit when we compared the amount of moles needed or produced. So we had a balanced chemical equation, um, and then I gave you a question like, if we have 3.5 moles of water produced, how many moles of oxygen reacted? So we started off with our given, which was the 3.5 moles of water. We then put moles of H2 on the bottom using its coefficient. So that was 2 moles of H2O that we got from our coefficient in the balanced equation, and that was equal to 1 mole of O2. And that, again, was using our coefficient from the balanced equation. And then our moles of H2O would cancel out, and then 3.5 divided by 2, because remember we multiply across the top, divide by the bottom, would give me 1.75 moles of O2. So the unit we end with up at the top is going to be the unit of our answer. So just a quick review of what we've already seen for dimensional analysis, because we're going to use it for this concept. So a chemical equation is a recipe for chemical reactions, but it's in moles, and we've learned about this already um, in terms of our chemical equations. The coefficients show us how many moles of each reactant are needed, and how many moles of each product are produced. However, our balances, what we actually used in our lab, don't measure things out in moles. They measure in grams. So we need to be able to convert back and forth between moles and grams. Before we convert um, between moles and mass, you always have to first determine the substance's gram formula mass, or GFM. And then we're going to use dimensional analysis. Um, and we're going to, our equalities, and this would be what's in our conversion factor, is either one mole over the gram formula mass, or if we need it the other way, the gram formula mass over one mole. And again, this GFM will come from that specific compound's formula. So our first example, and we're going to be determining how many moles we have um, in this sample of 60 grams of NaOH. So I first have to determine what the GFM is. You would look up the Na, O, and H. We have one of each. So our GFM is 40 grams per mole. And what that means is that for every 40 grams is equal to one mole of the NaOH. So we always start with what we're given. Um, I'm just simply placing it over one. You don't need to do that, but don't ever put units with that one. So my given is the 60 grams of NaOH. The grams of NaOH then, then need to go in the denominator, which comes from my GFM, which, sorry, I forgot a little decimal zero there. So 40 grams of NaOH, so again, my units are matching up diagonally, is equal to one mole of NaOH. So these two things are equal to each other. Again, in this case, we're using moles over the GFM because we started off with grams. So we need grams in the denominator of our equality. Those units could then be canceled out. And then our answer will be 60 times 1 divided by 40 gives us 1.5. And then our unit is whatever is left up in the numerator, which is the moles of NaOH. So for every 60 grams of NaOH, we get 1.5 moles of NaOH. All right, here's a very similar question, so you could pause it and try this out yourself. And then when you go ahead and check this, you should start with 42.2 grams of SrNO32, so our strontium nitrate. I'm placing it over 1. That's, again, what we're given. We're going to go convert from grams to moles. So grams, um, our GFM is going to go in the denominator, and our moles should go up in the numerator. So we then start with grams of Sr um, of the strontium nitrate. So those are diagonal. The GFM then goes with the grams, so 211.6, and then that's equal to one mole of the strontium nitrate. And then if we go ahead and solve this, 42.2 times 1 divided by 211.6 gives us 0.2, and then our, whatever unit is left in the numerator is our unit for our answer. So for every 42.2 grams of strontium nitrate, we have 0.2 moles present. All right, now we're just going to simply go the opposite way. The same thing, even though we're starting with moles, we still need to calculate our GFM of the calcium fluoride, which you can see up here on the screen is going to get 78.1 grams per mole. So now that we have both pieces of information, we're going to again start with what we're given, which in this case is 1.5 moles of our calcium fluoride. Now, because we have moles of calcium fluoride, we need our one mole of calcium fluoride to go in the bottom. 
that is then equal to the GFM of calcium fluoride, which we've already determined is 78.1 grams of calcium fluoride. Then we're going to go ahead and multiply it across the top. If there was anything on the bottom, we divide by it. So 1.5 times 78.1 is going to get 117.2. And just remember, whatever unit is left up in the numerator is our unit for our answer. So 1.5 moles of calcium fluoride would weigh 117.2 grams. All right, try this one out on your own and then check your work. Um, you should have found the GFM is 58.3 grams per mole. And remember, you have two oxygens and two hydrogens. We're going to then start with what we're given, which is the 0.75 moles of magnesium hydroxide. We then place moles, because that's what we're starting with, in the denominator of our conversion factor. So one mole of the magnesium hydroxide, that's equal to the GFM, because we're looking for grams, remember. So one mole is equal to 58.3 grams of magnesium hydroxide. And then these moles of magnesium hydroxide will cancel out, so we're left with grams of magnesium hydroxide, which is what we're looking for. And then 0.75 times 58.3 is going to get you 43.7 grams um, of magnesium hydroxide. All right, um, the very last part of your worksheet, um, if you can look on the back of your reference table, um, you should be able to see that you have... Um, your formula for mass to moles or moles to mass. We'll talk more about that tomorrow, but if you can at least copy that down, you just need to look on the back of your reference table and then go ahead and complete your summary.